is it like for you guys being the young guys in the locker room, like with those guys? Um, well, I heard uh, slow down. Where's the fire a lot? <laughs> so- <laughs> Oh, weird that's the refrain now right yes yeah yeah that's what i'm saying too sometimes yeah yeah you know i think certain certain people that kind of thought that uh there was a sense of entitlement amongst a lot of a lot of the independent talent in minnesota just because you had rick rude the road warriors nikita koloff you know that at all made it big darso and so they just assume if they were like six foot plus and you know, 250 pounds and looked like they were on a little bit of shit or whatever, that like it, the business was theirs for the taking, you know, yeah, they, and well, you know, the things problem, were starting to change. <laughs> well, you and I went over and above and did more than anyone else and to pursue it. I mean, you and I would even, like I mentioned this when I did your other podcast that we'd go to Kinko's and Sean knew how to print up posters and flyers and tickets and we would go paper the town. Yeah. So we did a little bit of everything in, in the business yep. and everyone else just sat home waiting for the phone to ring. Yep. And it doesn't work that way. You got to go get it. How, how is it for you getting to work? I mean, obviously Dallas, you, you guys are in that AEW orbit, like kind of flash forward here a little bit. Like how is it for you right now getting to still be like actively part of creating wrestling right now, Jerry, and yeah. like passing on your knowledge to the next generation of pro wrestlers at the moment. I love it. I mean, I, you know, every once in a while I'll do a seminar also, but, um, you know, you have some that you can tell it goes in one ear and out the other, and which is fine. You know, you'll yeah. find your own, I don't know. But then uh, when you see the light bulb go off in their eyes, that's that's the payoff. It's, it's really nice when you have ones that really soak it in and learn. And I tell them, first and foremost, even when I do seminars, everything I preach to you, I'm 100% guilty of. But that's how I've learned. Oh, yeah, right? Yeah. Hey, Chair. Hey, man. Um, what, like, it's it's so cool, and it makes me feel so good to see uh, you somewhere where you're obviously valued. Right. You know? Tony Khan is obviously, as well he should be, a big Jerry Lynn man, right? Like, and um, it just makes me feel so good, man, because that's where you – you totally deserve it, man. Well, thank you. Thank you. I always hoped I made enough friends some, along the way that I'd have a job afterwards someday. Because it was yeah. it was hard. It was hard having to quit. I went through like a, a two-year depression of drinking every day. And, you know, yeah. I put my poor wife through hell. But she stuck in there and didn't, you know, she didn't ride me or give me any grief. She knew I would just, you know, run its course and I'd be yeah. fine. Hey, so like once you once it ran its course, like, okay. Since you just brought it up, so like when you when you kind of were getting out of the trying to get out of wrestling or what, whatever you, decision you had made, you you went through you had some rough times with it and um, well, um, I didn't have a choice. My body said, oh, that's right. yeah. "It's done," and so I knew, you know, I never I knew it was coming to an end. Yeah, especially when. Because while I was still wrestling full time, I had a knee surgery and a shoulder surgery. But then finally, I think it was uh, in 2010, I had to get lower back surgery. I had a ruptured disc, and they had to go in and take a chunk out, and that put a whole different, you know, spin on things. Once you mess up your spine, that you're, that's a whole yeah. different ball game. And so uh, I couldn't wrestle full time anymore. And so my wife begged her boss to give me a job. So I, he gave me a job, thankfully, out in the warehouse. And but I still had to wrestle part time to make the bills, you know, because sure. they didn't start me had a lot of money. But I could tell every time after every match, just wrestling part time, my body's just screaming at me, "What are you doing?" And so I knew it was coming to an end. And then, well, uh, kind of back real quick to, to what you're doing now, Jerry. Like, yeah. like you know, you work with Tony. Tony's a known huge ECW fan. You are so synonymous with the the height of ECW. How is he getting to work with Tony? Like, obviously I'm sure he has a great appreciation for you, Jerry. Oh, great. Well, the first thing he reminded me of was he said he used to race home after school so he could watch Sean and I on global. Yeah. Really? I said, you're too Uh, young. How old are you? (laughs) You're too young to remember that, but he remembers everything. But uh, no, it's great working for Tony. He's a really great guy. And, 
he actually, like I've said this many times, uh, this is the best company I've worked for, even outside the wrestling industry, because you're treated like a human being and not just a number. All right. So, and, Jerry, yeah. the reason why I brought up, like, you know, like you start talking about having a rough time and, you know, making the decision to get out, <laughs> did that affect your decision when the wrestling <laughs> industry is trying to pull you back in? Uh, did you have to have second thoughts or think about it a little bit before you mean, took a job there? Oh, no, no. Because still along the way, you know, even because I was at that regular job for nine years before yeah. AEW came up. But uh, I would still occasionally do an autograph signing or a convention or a seminar or something. So I was still dabbling a little bit in the business. I wasn't out completely. So but you have, it, have, have you ever felt like, did, have you ever been mad at wrestling? Have you ever been mad at the business? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding them? me? The first time I met Roddy Piper was at <sighs> TNA, and I saw him after the show at TGI Fridays. And I, so I went and sat next to him. <clears throat> we talked for a while, and I told him, I said, you know what? I said, wrestling is a real love-hate relationship. I said, sometimes I hate the fact that I love it so much. And he said, that's mm -hmm. a great way of putting it. But, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's a it's a tough grind, you know. It's yeah. And it's very um, – you know, if you let it, it will, I mean, it does affect you yeah. mentally and emotionally, you know, especially like when you love something more than the love you get oh, yeah. back from it. Yes. Oh my yes. God. Right? Yeah. It, it, it's a tough grind, you know, and it's more than a full-time job. If, if you really want to pursue it, it's 24 seven. Yeah. So like you have to do like we did, in my opinion, to really make it like you just got to live it, breathe it. Like, yeah. Oh man. And you you can't stay home and wait for the phone ring. I threw all my clothes, whatever little few belongings I had, in four boxes in my eighty Plymouth Horizon, and I drove across country. And I couldn't afford a hotel room. I'd pull into a truck stop and sleep in my car. Like the fans wanted to just see and hear you guys. You know, like you talk yeah. about Tony Khan running home, and he's a Chicago area guy, right? I'm, I was born down in Texas. That was my my jam growing up. <laughs> um, but like you know, there is such fond memories and like again just thinking about you at AEW and like the style they do and like the fact that it's guys like the Bucks running the show I would think that there's like a huge appreciation for you there and it's got to be like I would just think they're going to you all the time for just advice or input or just help just knowing the way that the influences their work and like how you just fall into that vertical for so many things over there right now well some you know I usually I'll get a lot of people ask me but you know a lot of them will say, when are you going to coach my match? I'll say, well, you got to ask for me, you know, and then the company will know, you know, that you enjoy working with me. And so I always just tell them, make sure you ask and raise my clout with the company, hopefully. Hey, so, Chair, yeah, so, so like, yeah, do you mind me asking, like, how does that work there? Because I know I've heard people mention that it's not like, you know, WWE where, like, the, 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 the producer of the match is on you and, like, you know, you know what I mean, like, over – like, you know, over, like, you oh, I choose my spots because, I, um, I, I could never do what they do and I want them to paint their picture, you know, but I always try and, you know, let's, okay, let's first and foremost, what's the business of the match. Yeah. And then let's come up with an outline and then you guys put together what you would do. And then if something sticks out like a sore thumb, let's fix it. Yeah. And have it to where, you know, and, and I don't just, I don't just ever say, no, that sucks. I always say, well, that really doesn't work here. And here's why. And here's an example of what I would do or what I have done and of, of how it could be better, but do it how you would do it, you know, because yeah. so I just like that. I want them to paint their picture and do what they do because, you know, they're not going to, you know, like I said, I could never do what they do now. Sure. Yeah, but man, I'll, I know that um, I would like to think, Jerry, that if we had someone like that back back when we were young girls, like before we went, and, you know, WWF, all this shit, like I, w I would like to think that we would have been open and receptive to that. Like, but I don't know. Like, well, I, there are certain things I remember, like from Baron Von Roschke and Sheik uh -huh. Adnan. So I learned a lot from them just from being on some, you know, a lot of indie shots with them. Like uh, Baron taught me um, 
never beg the crowd. You mean like someone? A- yes. Someone had me in a big a bear hug, a big monster guy, you know, big guy, little guy match. I had me in a bear hug. And of course I started doing this behind his head to get the crowd going. And oh, while you're in the bear hug? Yes. <laughs> and I get in the back and Baron says, what the hell is that? He says, if someone's crushing your lower back, he says, would you actually be doing that? I said, no. He says, what would you be doing? I'd be, I'd be trying to get his hands off, you know? Right. So I always... I, I really reiterate to people selling and selling realistically. I tell them, you know, the days of the eighties, you know, jobber crappy flop yeah. seller over sell realistically. Yeah. yeah. And, and I tell them like, that's one thing. First day of camp. That's what Brad said. He says, you want to be a good worker, learn how to sell. And they call it selling because that's what makes them buy it. The minute you stop selling is the minute they stop caring about you. Then they can sit back in their chair t- breathe a sigh of relief and go, oh, okay, he's okay. Instead of being on the edge of their seat going, come on. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's that's what I really – and I, I learned, especially in ECW, because when I was in WCW, a friend of mine and I, we'd get together at 2 o'clock in the morning and watch ECW. And I swore up and down. I said, that's one company I will never work for because <laughs> we're watching balls and Sandman trade yeah. chair shots and they're clocking each other with whatever the fans are handing over the rail, frying pans, microwave ovens, yeah. Super Nintendos, you name it. One time I saw the kitchen, a, a kitchen sink got yeah. handed over the rail. So, but when it came time to go there, I learned real fast that the business is going to continue to change and evolve. And if you want to survive in the business, you have to be willing to change and evolve with it. But there are certain basic fundamentals and basic principles I will always stand by. And one of them is selling. And if we're not willing to try and suspend their beliefs, it's not fair for us to expect them to blow the roof off the place. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I preach that to a, a lot of the guys. 